Hey, what's up good people? Recovery for runners is so important. Whether it be a short run, long run, a difficult race, whatever it is, recovering your body is completely needed. So in this video, I'm going to give you a couple of my activities that I do to help to recover my body. And of course, if y'all watched my video last week, I had a half marathon that I did and I just want to dive into some of the things that I'm doing to get my body back into shape and feeling good and ready to hit the pavement again. may be saying that I don't really have soreness or sometimes I don't do long runs and that is totally fine. Even if you don't have any aches and pains, you still need to recover. Just because you're not hurting per se does not mean that you don't need to work on the muscles or work out the muscles that you have. A lot of times as athletes, we get what we call DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, D-O-M-S. And what that means is a lot of times during our runs, we feel good, we feel great. After the run, runs, we feel good. But then maybe a day or two, you might feel that soreness. Or you might do a heavy strength training workout and you feel that soreness or your arms are sore or you can't use the bathroom after a leg day that may happen a day or two after your workout and that is just a delayed onset however if you do what you need to do for recovery you can help to prevent or limit the soreness that you have so just a little update for me i am doing well i am walking without doing any lifting or limping excuse me without any limping however i know that when it comes to shins and calf pains a lot of times that continues to increase when you hit the pavement so i am going to continue to take a couple weeks off from doing any type of high impact um, exercises or doing any running and i'll probably go to cycling for a little bit to really allow the muscles to recuperate so I have been doing a lot of band work. Um, so that is me using these bands here to really work on my shins. So strengthening the muscle, make sure that I am exercising them in and out, doing a lot of things with the bands, doing a lot of just calf work and stretching them out as well as foam rolling. So this has been very important with my recovery, but here's some things that you can also do. So the first thing is whenever you get done working out or running, Honestly, recovery starts as soon as you get done with the workout. So for me, as soon as I got done with my half marathon on Sunday, I instantly chugged a protein shake. So for me, I love these core powers, amazing amount of protein, 26 grams of protein. And then you will also see a lot of people chug chocolate milk. Now, these two are awesome. So the nutrition gurus of running a lot of times will say that you should do four to one or three to one ratio when it comes to carbs and protein. So of course, when we work out, we deplete a lot of calories, but you want to ensure that you are, are getting in sodium, electrolytes, as well as your carbs. So this is your time to do carbs, sugar, whatever that you need to get into your body. But you want to ensure that you are at least doing the four to one or three to one ratio is really the research that I've been seeing. That is four grams of carbs every one gram of protein. So a lot of times chocolate milk protein shakes give you that, a really good smoothie can give you that. You don't have to chug a lot. So like for me, I am not usually very hungry after a long run, a long race, or a hard workout, but I at least try to chug down protein shakes or a or some kind of chocolate milk. When I get done with long races, usually I have a small cooler that I can actually put my protein shake in for when I get to my car and I can chug it on down. Now, something else that you can ingest is tart cherry juice. I hope that you all can see this here. So tart cherry ter cherry juice is something that you can drink after your workout. Usually I do it at night in the evening. Um, I don't pair it with the protein shakes because I don't want my stomach all messed up. But tart cherry juice helps with the inflammation of the muscles. So a lot of times when we're sore and we're hurting, it's because your muscles are inflamed. So tart cherry juice is something else that you can get. I got this from your local Walmart. I know they have it at Kroger, but these are just the little mini bottles and they also come in a big container. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm not usually hungry, but but I do try to eat 
something within the next hour or two to help to repair the body. So for me, if it's breakfast time, like you see here, I had a omelet with steak and potatoes and eggs for the protein, and it was super, super good. Um, but again, if you're not hungry immediately after, try to get in a shake or a smoothie, something you can drink really quickly, but it will still be able to help to replenish the muscles if you're not hungry at the moment. Now, once I get home, I try to immediately get into an ice bath. Now, I usually keep my clothes on with the ice bath just to, I don't know, protect me a little from the super, super cold. Um, but I usually put at least three bags of ice into a cold water, um, not warm water. So I run cold water, drop over the three large bags of ice, and I get in. Now, I'll tell y'all, the first one to three minutes is the hard time that you just need to talk to somebody, focus on something else. But once you get past that, you're good. I usually stay in the ice bath about 10 minutes, if not a little bit longer, if I can stand it. For the race last week, I was in there for 15 minutes. I got focused and start doing, or got unfocused. I started doing something else and started looking at my phone, posting my pictures for the race. So I was able to do it. Now, the reason why a lot of people love ice baths, including myself, is because again, your muscles are inflamed when you have a long run, hard workout, anything, anytime that you are sore, your muscles are usually inflamed. So what happens is that the cold and the ice helps to minimize the inflammation. You don't wanna get into a warm bath or a warm shower or a hot shower right after that because again, those muscles are inflamed. So allow those muscles to calm down a little bit and then get your shower. Trust me, your your body will thank you. I know a lot of people are probably listening to this part right now and are like, girl, I'm not getting an ice bath. Your body will thank you. I used to hate them, but I actually love them because I literally have less soreness as soon as I get out of the ice bath and the following day. All right, so the next thing that I like to do is ensure that I get a good stretch or foam roll in. So I use a couple different types of foam rollers. So I have these trigger point items. I use the longer stick usually when I'm really trying to get into a particular area and I don't feel like using my body weight to hold myself up. I actually love this one and it's actually really good for traveling. Now the bigger one is when I'm really trying to get into it, I'm ready to put my body weight on top and really get into it. Now something else that I love to use is my foot roller. So I don't know about you guys, but sometimes my feet hurt after a run or you may have some, ten some soreness on your feet this sucker right here is amazing. Sometimes I put it underneath my desk for work and I just roll my feet as I'm working. Now this good old sucker. Now, I know that you all see the Theragun and all these other things. Y'all, this thing is amazing. I did not spend five, $600 on this thing. I believe I spent either between 40 and $60 on this from TJ Maxx or Ross literally and when i tell you guys that this gets in the cracks and crevices the way that it needs to it really does a body good i do this every night on those sore mus muscles and areas along with my foam re rolling and stretching and it feels so good so definitely shop around shop around i know the like name brand ones are hundreds of dollars but this works just as good and when it comes to the stretching and foam rolling you need a good five to ten minutes of really getting in there in the afternoon after you get done with your run and then before you go to bed. Um, and when you do before you go to bed, usually I like to do a warm bath in the evening. So whether that be with Epsom salt, um, eucalyptus scent or whatever, a lavender scent, whatever it is so that you can actually get some rest. But I like to do a warm bath at night, not during the same time that I'm doing the ice bath, but I do a warm bath at night. And then I will do your massage gun or stretching and foam rolling again afterwards and then get a good night's rest. Now rest is very, very important. So sleep is important to allow the body to repair as well as release all the toxins that may have built up while you were doing your workouts. So you want to ensure that you're getting a good night's sleep because sleep is a part of the recovery process. Uh, while you're resting, taking a nap, sleeping for the night, whatever it is, a lot of times people like to put on compression socks. Now, in this video before, I was putting on compression sleeves to actually run so that it would help with the muscle circulation, excuse me, the blood circulation while I was running. But there are some people that love to run in full compression socks. I don't like to, it's too much compression for me. However, I do like to use compression socks when I um, am recovering. So I may wear them around the house. I will put them on sometimes to help with the blood circulation and just help to compress. They're almost like a 
the recovery boots, which I don't have any of those. That'd be a good Christmas gift. I don't have the recovery boots, but the socks definitely do help. And here's a brand that I love, Pro Compression. They're an amazing company and definitely check them out if you're looking to get some compression socks. All right, guys, so we're getting to the end. So the last thing is the day after a hard workout or run, a lot of times they say go for a recovery run or walk whatever it is for me a lot of times it is a recovery walk or it is recovery cross training so i may get on the bike to do some cycling or i may go for a walk um but i want to ensure that i'll get my stretching in but you want to do some movement you want to actually ensure that your body is releasing any toxins any of that and it helps to move out the soreness now trust and believe those first couple steps may hurt but it's so worth it when you kind of get some movement in the day after your workout and lastly, if you need to take time off, guys, take time off. A lot of times they say after a full marathon, you want to take a week or two off from doing any activities. Sometimes for a half, you want to take a week. It depends on you and your recovery and as well as your fitness. There's some people that can go out and run a long distance or do a hard workout and they don't have to take any time off. But I want us to, to do better with glorifying rest days and taking time off to rebuild your muscles and not glorifying going hard and only going hard um we need to take the time to rest and recuperate our body and it is okay to take rest days and take that time off you only have one body but the pavement will always be there so make sure you take care of it so these are some of my recovery tips that i use on a consistent basis whether it be after a race long run during my training anything i just my nails match my shirt um anything that you may have but ensure that you are doing what you can to take care of your body of course there are some other supplements out there that people use people use pressure boosts as well i don't have those things but the things that i showed you are all in reasonable prices so you don't have to go out and spend a whole lot of money on getting repair items but ensure that you're doing what you need to do to repair so that you can continue going forward i want to say thank you so much to everyone that reached out to me and all of the kind words that i got on my last youtube video i just really wanted to show you guys that running is not always glorious even though I run I am a coach I have been running for several years I have my bad days as well I have pain I have injury I am not perfect but at the same time I enjoyed myself and the biggest thing was that I finished that race so thank you all for the love and support that you gave me in regards to that and I hope that these tips help you to recover on your runs or your workouts or your walks whatever they are help you to recover so that you can continue to have long safe injury free less information as possible so thank you guys so much if you have not already definitely give me a thumbs up like subscribe and share and i will speak to you all again